Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today is Monday, which means it's time for an episode of Loadout, the series where you guys, the viewers, get to pick a gun and customization for me to use. The way you do this is you leave a comment down below letting me know what kind of weapon and accessory you'd like me to run with, and I will pick one of the top rated comments for the next episode. Today's top comment comes from Liam Miller. He says, in honor of Chris Kyle and Mark Lee, the Chris Kyle American Sniper Loadout, class recon, primary M40A5, most closely resembles the McMillan TAC 338. We'll be using the the rifle scope, variable zoom attachment, flash hider, bipod, paint job will be spray desert similar to desert camo. Secondary P226, iron sights, no accessories, standard barrel. Gadget 1 is the PLD, gadget 2 C4, grenade, M67 frag, knife, seal obviously. Field upgrade is sniper and camo is Marpat Desert. Now I recently saw the film American Sniper in theaters and I really enjoyed the film. It's based on Chris Kyle, the most lethal sniper in American history. He has 160 confirmed kills. He was a US Navy SEAL sniper and he went on four different tours during the Iraq war. Now if you want to know more about him there's plenty of information on the internet and I actually started reading the autobiography myself just because I'm pretty curious about what kind of life he led. Now as for this Loda I have to say the M40A5 looks pretty darn badass with the desert camo on it. I'll probably run it this way from now on but uh, I try to play as much Rush whenever possible. I did do some TDM just to get some generic gameplay and kills. Rush didn't always work out the way I wanted it to. The M40A5 is a tricky rifle to use because it has that slower bullet velocity, which makes it really hard to use at longer ranges. You really have to wait for a lot of your targets to sort of stand still because it becomes impossible to predict their movement. So if a target changes trajectory while your bullet's in flight, it's guaranteed gonna miss. That's because it's got a 480 meter per second bullet velocity. Now, if you're looking for something a little bit more responsive, I recommend the JNG90 or the SRR61. Both of those have over 600 meter per second bullet velocity. The JNG90 has 670 meters per second, which is almost 200 meters per second faster than this rifle. So it's going to be way easier to hit those moving targets. Now the loadout itself did say flash hider, although I believe Chris Kyle actually had a suppressor on his rifle in real life. However, I'm glad I didn't have to use a suppressor for this loadout because it would have made this rifle even more difficult to use. It would have lowered that bullet velocity way down, and then my ability to hit moving targets would have pretty much been gone. Now in game whenever you equip a suppressor it pretty much assumes that you're using subsonic ammo thus lowering your bullet velocity way down. In real life you don't necessarily have to use subsonic ammo with a suppressor. It's not going to make the gun particularly quiet overall but it will lower that decibel level a certain amount making it somewhat useful regardless. Now nobody else on my team was effectively taken on this Amtrak so I had to get in there and go for that C4 kill. Kill myself in the process but you know what that's always a worthy trade off. Now I'm being that guy on the roof of Zavad 311 in TDM but uh, you know what the enemy team was actually getting the better of us in terms of the rooftop camping this round I end up finding this little spot to shoot through the roof here and basically take out all these guys mid firefight uh, it's a great distraction when your enemy team's down there shooting assault rifles at them they have no idea that a sniper is actually picking them off one by one and that really should be your ultimate goal as a sniper you don't want to take on people head on I mean sure there's no avoiding the sniper duel but other than that you really want to let your teammates take the brunt of the attack. It's a harder thing to do in TDM since everything's kind of spread out and there's no real clear front line, but in game modes like Rush where there's more of a clear front line, you can easily stay behind it, let your teammates take on the action, and basically pick people off from afar. Now if you're defending on Rush, you can always kind of sit back towards your spawn location and pick off people going for those MCOMs, which I tried to do on several occasions. Now what I like about the heist game mode in Battlefield Hardline is it gives you a lot of options as a sniper. Do you want to sit back at your deployment or behind the drop-off location and snipe from there? Do you want to pick some weird obscure location and snipe them while they're on their way to the drop-off? Or do you actually want to try and cover the loot pickup spot and maybe find a good sniper location there? You have a lot more options rather than the standard rush game mode, which is simply just overwatch the MCOMs. Not necessarily saying it's better, but it's just a little bit more interesting, a little less predictable and more dynamic. Now I didn't really have much opportunity to use the bipod and one never really does in battlefield. There just aren't long enough engagement distances to really make it more worthwhile and frankly
frankly, once you're stationary as a sniper, it makes you a very easy target for other snipers. Now, in real life, these rifles are pretty darn front heavy, so if you're actually trying to stand up and aim accurately at somebody 100 meters, 200 meters away, you would have a ton of scope sway, making it extremely difficult to get something like a headshot, which you're going to see me do all the time in this video. I'm just kind of popping out, taking aim, taking the shot. This is something that is pretty much impossible to do in real life, or at least extremely difficult. This is where you're going to want to set up the rifle, the bipod, steady your aim, and take the shot. You also don't really have to worry about 3D spotting too much in real life again. So there just isn't enough use for the bipod in this game because it just doesn't have the real world benefits. Now, if you watched my recent Arma sniping series, you can see there where a bipod might come in handy because there's enough sway at those extreme sniping distances. Is we were sniping at like 600 meters, 700 meters, 800 meters, and there you're going to see a lot of sway, in which case minimizing that sway as much as possible becomes very, very important. Otherwise, you're going to miss your target. Now, when it comes to sidearms, I really like the P226. I think you guys generally know my philosophy on using the 93R G18, something with a lot of automatic close quarter power for recon classes, but I still like the P226 a lot as a sidearm. Probably one of my favorite semi-auto pistols. I think I'm actually nearing the mastery dog tag on that weapon as well. Now I got the M40A5 mastery tag a while back and I haven't been really using this gun a lot on my own, but I've still got seven service stars with this thing. It's actually my most used sniper rifle and I think it's really a lot because you guys like to see it in loadouts and stuff like that. The M40A5 is a cool rifle in real life. It's just unfortunately not really reflected as well in the stats of Battlefield 4. Now finishing up this gameplay here, we're defending on Golmud Railway. This is really an ideal rush map to play with a bolt action sniper. There's a lot of open ground and the enemy has to cross it in order to arm those MCOMs. At the same time, your sniping locations are a little bit limited. So if you have an offensive sniper looking for you, it's not going to be too hard to figure out where you are. Hence, not using the bipod and sitting stationary. I'm usually peeking over ledges, moving around a lot and only standing still when I take my shot. I think I'm a really big fan of this loadout on an aesthetic level. I love the look of the M40A5, especially with that desert camo. It's just something about it that looks very authentic and hardcore military. Sadly though, the rifle rarely performs the way I wish it did in game. Don't forget to leave your comments down below letting me know what kind of weapon and accessories you'd like me to run with for next week's episode, and I'll see you guys next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.